So, Seamog, where are we on this very hot and terrible day? Rice, rice, baby. Din, 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 din. <laughs> Something about rice just reminds me of today's topic. Oh, yeah, we're talking about music. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> quite yeah. a stretch today. Yeah. But well, it is quite beautiful out here, albeit unbelievably hot. Yes. Gotta so, die. <laughs> whew, let's get on our bikes and get, get some wind in our... Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Do you know just, songs about wind? Uh, uh, it's wind and fire. Let's go. So, Seamilk, we've had a couple of requests. People asking us what the music scene in China's like. So, well, what's it like, Seamilk? It's quite interesting because I would call myself someone that was fairly in interested in music. My whole family, you know, I should say my dad's side of the family is really into music and playing instruments and stuff. I, yeah. I play electric bass. Nice. I learned a little piano growing up. Um, always been interested, and it's weird how my passion for music kind of waned after I moved to China. And that's because, I gotta be honest with you, the music scene is not uh, really a scene so much. Care to elaborate? Yeah, okay. Well, when I first got to China 10 years ago, this, the music I was hearing everywhere was basically just techno remixes of popular Western songs. Mm -hmm. uh, very often they change the lyrics to Chinese, but yeah. there was no original Chinese music. It was just like, where should we go, left or right? Yeah, left, I think. Okay, all right. Yeah, so it was basically just um, techno remixes of like that really annoying song. Do you remember that annoying song that like, uh, what was it, that? My Yahoo! My Yahoo! Yeah, that song. <laughs> that was like blaring constantly everywhere, yeah. right? Same when I came, yeah. yeah. Uh, and just that's an example, for instance, and they they changed their lyrics. So, you know, it was, wasn't it some kind of Serbian song or something? I guess, Bosnian, uh, I think. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, yeah it was a, a different language, and they changed it to Chinese, and they changed it to like, Kan Jin Jiang Lang Wo Bu Pa Bu Ba La, which means yeah. when, when I see a cockroach, I'm not afraid. Right. You know, and <laughs> I mean, I was, I was just like, this isn't music, you know. It's already a shit song, yeah, must be fair. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> and that's like what everybody was listening to, right? Sure. I mean, I, I'll counter. <laughs> there were yeah. ballads and stuff. There were like a lot of love songs. There was that one when I first came, and so pardon the old man nostalgia here, but yeah. there was that one It was, You may or in the high song, you know that song? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, whatever, whatever the lyrics are. Anyway, there was a lot of music like that, but it was severe like outdated in, yeah, in its yeah. sound you yeah. know and it turns out very quickly you realize that when you're out of the countryside yeah let's go back this looks like horrible village stuff okay there's nothing wrong with horrible villages yeah, we'll, come, we'll come back but that fork I think if we would go the other I way gotcha. we'd probably get more nice kind of sure anyway, yeah continue um, as soon as you leave the countryside you realize that a lot of the people if they wanted to hear Mandarin or Cantonese songs Chinese songs so, yeah they're listening to stuff from uh, Hong Kong and Taiwan. Yeah, I mean, that's something I noticed straight away because the, the, one of the first things you do as a foreigner is you get taken to a KTV or a karaoke bar, right? Yeah. And uh, it's awesome, by the way, especially in the beginning. I loved it. I'd go all the time because you go there, you drink, you sing. It's kind of ridiculous, but especially when you're new in China, you kind of want to impress your Chinese friends because you learn one or two Chinese songs really well. Yeah. Usually something like Tonghua. Or, it's know. really it's really fun in the beginning because yeah, you're singing in a different language and everyone's cheering you on. Yeah. Really Should fun. We, uh, 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 sorry, almost went oh, into okay. a private residence. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, right? But then I also started to notice. I was like, why are the characters all traditional characters? on all these KTV ah, things. Yeah, 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 I remember that. And I was asking them, and they were like, oh, because this one comes from Taiwan, this one comes it, from Hong remember Kong. Remember on the screen, it would say Taiwan only. Yeah, it's like, for <laughs> only for use in Taiwan, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then it turns out that, like, I'd say a good 90% of the popular songs in China all come from Taiwan yeah. or Hong Kong. Or Hong Kong, yeah. So I, w I was kind of baffled, and I was like, hey, listen, asking my Chinese friends, what about local Chinese music? And they were like, well, there just aren't any good, you know, songs. Yeah. So uh, there were a couple of, like, <laughs> just ridiculous. They're all, always, like, either, like, old classical songs, right? Sure. The kind of things that grandpas listen to. Yeah, like communist you know, anthems. Yeah, or some kind of um, opera, you know, Beijing opera type yeah. sc screeching stuff that they love. It would be 
something like Yue Liang Dai Biao Wu De Xin or you know, right, one of these right. kind of like old classic Chinese songs. But any kind of modern Chinese music was always just like comical, you know, like ridiculous stuff, like Fang uh, Bian Mian, you know, that kind of song. Right, like, right. You know, that kind of shit. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, I'm going to love you till your face looks like instant noodles. I'm going to laugh at that song, but I'm going to recommend that you... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, let's go. No, 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 you go ahead. Yeah, okay, I'm going. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going. And then... Just go ahead. <laughs> I'm going. Cool. <laughs> Oh, there's, a t there's a milk dog. <laughs> you saw the milk I bet dog. you to the wolves. <laughs> okay. You did right. it to me last time. You yeah. left me in the dust. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Mil milk dog just... Is, he's a kind... She's a kind oh, milk no, dog. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Here oh, we go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you're okay. You're okay. Always milk dogs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay. okay. So, like I said, they're kind of comical, but... Has that changed, Seamilk? Have you noticed any, like, world-class music coming out of China? What I've noticed is that um, the explanation for a lack of local music scene or a lack of kind of uh, less than pop music, you know what I mean? Not, not super, super popular megastars. Yeah. Is the, the fact that Chinese people have never been known for too much self-expression. Right. And uh, that is fully, fully seen in the music, right? Sure. So the borrowed music makes sense from all these different places. And then you also have... Um, you also have a big change though, and that's what I wanted to get into. Okay. Was that when we went to Beijing, we actually saw like a black metal bar. Yeah. Which was freaking awesome. Sure. And uh, we actually saw kind of people doing their own thing and singing like heavy metal in Chinese and stuff, which was really, really cool. But I can't say that's indicative of the rest of China because no. just recently in Huizhou, did bands start playing that were not foreign and singing their own songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like hip hop and metal and all that kind of more rebellious type of music is starting to slowly catch on. Yeah, but it is only in the big first year cities. It is. It really like is. Like Beijing and Shanghai. And Shenzhen also has a little bit of a sort of a rock and metal scene. I've very been, small, uh, yeah. Like it's very small. It's the kind of thing that happens once every couple of months and right. in one place. A place called the Brown Sugar Jar, you know, that kind sure. of thing. Uh, but the majority of people don't care for that kind of music and they just very happy, happily listen to Xiaoping Guo all day long. That's, that's another thing I wanted to mention actually, was uh, pretty much one of the only songs that... I mean, people always talk about cultural exportation. Mm -hmm. And the reason that big superpowers like America kind of make it big in the world stage is actually because of their entertainment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, everyone watches American shows and listens to American music. Everyone knows who Taylor Swift is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These kind of things are cultural ex- where are we going? Just go We're down back here. here. You, you wanted to go down here, Okay. So. Um, these cultural exports mean that other countries borrow them and kind of, you know, the, the, the how to say, the taste follows suit. Yeah. And, uh, the only thing that I think that Westerners might know, the only song that Westerners might know from China recently is Xiaopingua, Little Apple, yeah. which is a, just an awful song, it's and I terrible. hear it everywhere, and honestly, I hope you don't put a little clip of it in this edit, because I'll kill myself. <laughs> um, but that's the problem, is that China doesn't have cultural export and music, but everyone knows K-pop, right? Sure. K-pop is huge all over the world right now. Of course, and Japanese, J-pop, and like J-pop, baby metal and stuff. But yeah, there's all kinds of big, big uh, music superpowers, really coming out of these countries, but China's left in the dust yet again, right? Yeah. And you see that in the local shift as well. I'm going to say Chinese pop music is even less popular in China now, and it's all K-pop Yeah. at this point, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Even the fashion. Yes, fashions are, they've, it seems to filter from Japan to Korea, then to China. Right. In that order, with music and fashions. Um, right. You know, so you still get people here dressing like the Japanese did in the 90s. Right. With those crazy out, like, hair and right. you know yeah especially in the rural areas in fact that's big that's very popular we've got to dig up that clip that yeah, i, I got must. the other day of those, uh, <laughs> those cool guys doing their like uh <laughs> elvis presley kind of thing you know this area is nice yeah it's really nice this is way better than i thought <laughs> cool they're actually had to, planting had trees it. yeah anyway so yeah i mean Music here, there isn't really a scene. You know, I actually, little known fact, I used to be a DJ at some point in my life. Okay. Um, but I used to DJ sort of metal and alternative gothic music, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so music was always a 
an important part of my life and I especially love 80s music. So right. yeah, you come to China and you fall out of touch with music because it's not there. Yeah. And recently when I went back to visit America and I was just driving around listening to the radio yeah. and you've got all the the newest pop hits and stuff and you kind of fall back into it again, you know? It's right. nice, it's nice. It's like, uh, it's something that I actually, I didn't realize it, but I really miss living yeah, in China. Yeah, I actually, I, could, I couldn't stand most pop music and stuff back home and then I had a new appreciation for it when I moved here. Yeah, absolutely. Because even, even when you turn on the radio here, you don't even hear music. It's usually just advertisements and monologues. Yeah, just long monologues, it's true. Maybe, so, we yeah. can, maybe we can turn the radio on in my car and listen to some <laughs> Chinese radio. Yeah, I guess you could yeah. if you're interested. But I mean, yeah. that's pretty much, I don't know, I, th I think a lot of people are curious because they think that the music shows and scenes are very similar or have they have something similar here in China. And unfortunately, it's just in the deep minority. You're going to have to search really hard in a first tier city to find a really robust music scene. Correct. So that's it. China's music scene is still very, very much in its infancy. Yeah. Most of the music is just sort of techno pop nonsense that most people couldn't take seriously. Yeah. Uh, notwithstanding some very good classics and, you know, um, old cultural stuff, which is really good and, you know, valid. But other than that, you know, we're kind of stuck. <laughs> right. So is there anything you want to say to our subscribers before we finish this? I would like to say that we are wicked lost <laughs> and we have no idea how to get home and we're gonna have to close this episode somewhere around this vicinity so I can check my phone if we have signal and we can get home and I'd also like to say that whether you are musically inclined or a little apple yourself <laughs> I hope that you like comment and subscribe excellent and I'd just like to say remember that time I was in the supermarket and there was this old grandpa and he like le leaned over to his little grandson and he said <laughs> which means you're my which, little apple, did yeah, you know? Which, which is probably one of the least awesome things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> However, I like this ducks. pond full of ducks. <laughs> Hello ducks. I'd like to ask you all out there to, as always, you know the drill, stay awesome. Take a breath, you fill up my lungs. Uh, and if my mind's